You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number nine. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. All right. Hello, everybody. It's so good to be with you today. You know, um, Marcel and I are just having such a great time creating these podcasts for you. By the way, say hi, Marcel. <laughs> She's here today. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so I really didn't have any idea how much fun this was going to be. And um, we love reading comments people are posting. So um, thanks for doing that and keep them coming. And, you know, just make sure that you get on there and rate the podcast. And, um, let everybody you know know about this because I don't think we're talking about weight loss in the way most people talk about weight loss, right, Marcel? Would you agree with that? No, or I would not? totally agree with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about the scale, and I'm not talking about the food scale. I'm just talking about you know your not so friendly bathroom scale, right? And we all kind of have a relationship with our bathroom scale. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk about that because, you know, if you're in the process of trying to lose weight, I'm going to suggest that you put that thing away. And I want to explain why. Like, just for now, while you're in the weight loss process, it would be a really good idea to put it up on a very high shelf in a room that you never go in or put it in your garage or in an attic, just just don't put it where it's easy to get to. Now, Marcel, why do you think I make this recommendation? I would say because numbers do not reflect fat and muscle. True. Also, very true. But I also, that's absolutely right. And I also know how much it messes with our minds. It really does. And so um, I have patients who will come in and they'll say like, I'm not losing any weight at all. I'm not losing any weight. I'm getting really, really discouraged. And I will ask them, well, how do you know you're not losing weight? And they're like, well, I'm weighing myself. And I'm like, there, therein lies your problem, right? So mm -hmm. the, the scale is just one. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's I was going to add one thing that I have seen many, many times is when people have their home scales, mm -hmm. they get up first thing in the morning, they are not, you know, they weigh naked on the mm -hmm. scale. And then by the time that they come in to get on the scale for their visit, mm -hmm. they will have gone up three pounds from what their scale said. And yeah. I try to explain to them, do not weigh at home and then come and weigh later on in the day, because for one, you're wearing clothes. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you eat and, you know, you can fluctuate through, throughout the day. So yeah. when those three pounds show up, when they come to the clinic, they're automatically disappointed because yeah. they think that they have gained weight from, you know, the first thing in the morning to when they, they came in. And I, I just tell them, don't do that because you're just always going to be disappointed. And yeah. it is not, it's not correct because your genes, I know, weigh two pounds. Yeah. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's better to not, to not weigh at home. When you're so so when people come into our clinic and they weigh themselves once a month, Marcel or Tanya, our other medical assistant, um, is usually the one that's going to weigh them in. And so, like, what is that process like for people? You know, you mentioned how if they've weighed themselves in the morning and they can weigh more, you know, in the afternoon. But like, what kinds of things do you see people saying to themselves and to you? Um, well, it really depends on if they felt like that they've had a successful month or uh -huh. if they have not had a successful month because sometimes, you know, people are excited to get on the scale mm -hmm. and I always encourage people to do the body composition over the scale every time they come in because mm -hmm. I have seen people get on the scale and say, I did everything right and I'm not gaining or I'm not losing any weight and they get frustrated but then when I have them hop on the body composition, then they see that they have dumped fat and they built muscle mm -hmm. and their visceral fat has gone down. Mm -hmm. And then they leave happy because then they, it's broken down. They realize 
that they have done well and it is showing. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that over and over and over again. So yeah. um, Yeah. So the, the, uh, just the regular scale just doesn't tell you anything, but what gravity is doing to your body. I know. It's it's not helpful. (laughs) So (laughs) true. So I want to talk about the body composition, but before I do that, I want to talk about there's, there's three things that kind of happen to people. Like, let's say that you're, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying here, which I hope you will. But, but um, let's say you're a podcast listener and you're like, I can't get rid of my scale. I just can't. It's, it's, I mean, I just depend on that thing. And so you get on the scale and let's say you had a weekend where you did really, really well. Like you killed it this weekend. You ate healthy food all weekend long and you didn't go out and splurge on Friday margaritas and you didn't drink wine and you, you just did great. And you get on the scale on Monday morning. You're like, I know I lost weight this weekend and the scale is up two pounds. So what do you do? Oh, I guess this isn't working. Why am I depriving myself of all of that stuff? And you forget about the, I, the fact that all of that stuff is actually very toxic for you. And all you can think about is you're depriving yourself. And so then you just give up and you go, you go back to eating crap again. So that's one thing that can happen. And that happens a lot. The other thing that can happen is you could have a whole weekend where you just really splurged and you did have the margaritas and you did have the wine and you did have desserts and you did have a lot of stuff. And you get on the scale on Monday morning and your weight's down. And then you're like, this is your addiction brain, right? Going, oh, that was fine. You didn't have any problem with that. You can handle it. And so then the addiction brain is going to get in there and say, go for it. Then you're off track. It's like, it just, it doesn't matter what happens with the scale. Like your brain is going to find a way to tell you to keep eating crap. <laughs> you know, that's just, the- yeah, that's exactly what happens to me is that I become so obsessed with the scale that if I had a bad weekend, like you said, and mm-hmm. I didn't um, gain any weight, that's, that's the thing that my brain says is, oh, okay, well, you can probably get away with it again. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I've like hit a, like a goal weight. Yeah. My, the first thing my brain says is, okay, well now you can go have, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that because you're doing mm-hmm. so well. Go buy a donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly what I want to do. Go to Twisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. I think that, I, that actually happened to me. I think that yeah. we discussed that. Yeah. Yeah. When I was going through the detox, when I started mm-hmm. losing the weight. That's the first thing that I said is, oh man, I could start getting away with having this or having that. And that is not, that's not a good way of thinking because the minute you do have a this or that, then that addictive part of your brain starts giving you cravings. Mm -hmm. And then it's really hard to get back on track. So yeah, 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 don't pay attention too much to the scale. I have done this myself in the past. Um, I struggled with food thoughts, weight thoughts, all that stuff for a long, long time before I finally got this figured out. But, you know, I'd get up in the morning, I'd pee, I'd weigh myself, and then I'd go eat breakfast. And then I'd go weigh myself after breakfast to find out how much fat did that cause? (laughs) Just like this craziness. How much weight did I gain from breakfast? And, and I'm assuming that the weight gain is fat, is fat gain, right? And then I'd, Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd go weigh myself again before lunch. And then I would uh, find out how much I weighed after lunch. I mean, it was just like this obsession with what do I weigh? And it can, it can get really, really toxic. And when you're in the weight loss process, you know, it's just, it's so important that you, that you give all of that up, that you just give. All I of see people up. a lot that will, the first thing they do when they come in is of course they use the restroom uh-huh. because they want to, you know, get everything out. And yeah. they also, will not eat for the entire day. Yes. Because they mm-hmm. have a weigh in. Mm-hmm. So they're giving, you know, they're giving up what they're supposed to be doing just because they are afraid of, you know, what's going to happen when they weigh in. Because they think that I so many people think that if they went up on the scale that we are going to be disappointed in them. Yeah. Yeah. And it and all comes down to, you know, these these numbers. And it's yeah. just really is not important. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, oh my gosh. So 
That is so true. So, so what I want people to understand is that you need to just get rid of your scale because it's, first of all, it's not going to give you any accurate information whatsoever. It's not going to tell you how much fat you've lost. There are actually three different elements to your weight. There's the fat weight, and that's going to go down if you're eating correctly. There's the muscle mass, and that's hopefully going to go up if you're eating correctly. And then there's water weight, and that your kidneys are in charge of. You have no control over how much water your body decides to hold on to at any moment in time. I mean, I suppose, you know, you have control over how much salt you eat. and Salt can cause water retention. But for the most part, you want to just let your kidneys do their job. Your kidneys have to manage your sodium levels, your potassium levels, your blood pressure. There are hormonal shifts that occur every month that cause water retention for women. There's just a lot going on. And we have to just respect our kidneys. We just do. And so that is the beauty of the body composition testing. And so I use a scale called the in-body scale. And it gives us an exact number for body fat. It gives us an exact number for body water. And then all the rest of the weight is what's called dry lean mass because it's not fat and it's not water. It's dry lean. And that's where we see the muscle changes occurring. And I have had it happen so many times where somebody comes in and they're like, you know, I've just been killing it. My nutrition is spot on. I feel great. I'm in smaller clothes. Things are going amazingly. And the scale weight is either like exactly the same or it might even have gone up. And then I'm like, oh, we got to get a body composition and find out what's going on because we can see it, you know? And so we get the body composition and we discover there was like four or five pounds of fat loss that month. And there was a pound of muscle gain. And then for whatever reason, the kidneys just decided that they needed to hold on to some water that day. And so I see that a lot, especially for, you know, all of us women retain water during certain times of the month. And so some of the patients will come in and they'll get on the scale and, you know, they jumped up four pounds. And I say, you know what, let's get back on the body comp and Mm -hmm. water weight that they're, you know, they've just been retaining some water. So it's, and it's not that big of a deal. It's just not. Yeah. And retaining water isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't, I'm not even sure if retaining is the right word because it's just that sometimes your body just needs more fluid on board than other times. And so all day long, you're breathing, you're, I mean, we are, we're all wearing masks these days. So we know that our breath has water in it because we're seeing the moisture build up in the masks. You're sweating all day. You don't even know it, but there's water coming off of your skin all day. Even if you're not working out. Mm-hmm. you're drinking, you're peeing, you're pooping, you know, like there's just water in and out all day. And so it's just not a big deal. I do see times where people have had weight loss and mm-hmm. I discover that they actually had fat gain with weight loss. And usually that yeah. happens when somebody has been super stressed out and they're not sleeping. And um, they're not eating properly. And when they are eating, they because they're in a situation that's really, really stressful, when they are eating, it's usually processed, something processed, because they don't have the time to eat wholesome real food, or at least that's what they're telling themselves. There will be weight loss and fat gain. So I do see that as well. This is a a big plug for stress management, of course, (laughs) you know, because and making sure you're getting your rest and making sure that you're drinking your fluids um, and all of that stuff that goes into good self-care. So, Right. And I do see that it's very important, especially for the newer patients, because Mm -hmm. when they're just learning how to eat differently and properly, Mm -hmm. they sometimes are not getting enough protein in and they don't even realize it. They think they are. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's a good way to monitor whether or not your body is responding to the protein that you're getting in and it's dumping fat and holding mm-hmm. on to muscle. So mm-hmm. I think especially during, you know, when you're brand new into it, it's so important to make sure that the doctor can take a look at it and she will be able to tell you that you need to bump up your protein. 
mm-hmm. that you're not getting enough because you're losing too much, you know, you're, you're losing weight, but you're losing too much muscle along with fat. So, yeah, yeah. so it's a great indicator of that. I, I love, I love the Embody machine so much. I know. Yeah. So for, for our podcast listeners who are not seeing us as patients, and there are a lot of you out there, here's how you can get a body composition test done. Go to Inbody usa.com if you're in the united states otherwise just go to inbody.com and there is a tab there that says locations and you just click on the tab and your computer is going to know where you are and it will just show you different facilities where they have an inbody machine where you can get the test done and you know there'll be a there'll be a fee for it um, and I'm not sure, you know, every, every place is different in terms of what they charge, but it's worth doing once a month to get the accurate information that you need. And if you keep a really careful food journal, so you can know that you're getting the protein that you need, and you can know that you're being super careful with your carbs and sugar, um, then you can get the data that you need to be able to make decisions about what is best for your body. Like I discover some people need way more protein in order to save their muscle mass while they're going through this. They need like well, Especially if they're working protein. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then other people don't necessarily need quite so much. Everybody's so different, you know. And so, and you don't want to compare yourself with anybody else. You have a unique physiology, a very unique body. So never compare yourself with anyone else. And you don't want to gun it for quick weight loss. The other thing that the body composition machine will tell you is what your basal metabolic rate is. And that's going to give you a good sense of how many calories you should be eating. If you can get the right amount of calories, like you don't want to be dropping yourself down to a thousand calories a day and starving your body. That's a really good way to put it into famine. We talked about this in, um, I think it was podcast episode two, where we talked about diets and how, you know, we put our bodies in a famine state when we drop our calories down to a thousand or 800, sometimes even lower than that. I am so against doing that because what I've discovered is that if you can eat enough calories to cover, in other words, to equal out what your basal metabolic rate is, then you're going to lose fat and you're not going to lose muscle while you're at it. And you're not going to be starving yourself. One thing I I do tell patients is that we're not just trying to lose weight. You're trying to lose fat. And you're trying yes. to keep your muscle. Yes. So yeah. much more important. Much more important. So again, I hope that helps. And I hope that you will take my advice and put the dang scale away. Okay. At least while you're in the weight loss process. Now, I will say once you have hit a good stable weight loss plateau and you're in your ideal body, it is a good idea to weigh yourself. The research shows that if you weigh yourself like once a week, you can sometimes catch weight gain early. Because remember our brains, they want us to eat crap and we might get into a phase where we're eating crap and we'll be able to catch ourselves if we are weighing ourselves once a week and we start seeing it start to creep up. If you're at a good stable plateau weight and you weigh yourself once a week, you're going to discover there's a range. There's a two or three or four pound range that's just sort of normal for you, where your clothes feel good, you feel good, everything's great. If you start to get up above that range, then you'll know, oh, I might want to just check. I might want to do some food journaling and see if there's some stuff sneaking in that um, some old habits are starting to creep back in. And usually you'll, you'll be able to figure out exactly what's happening. But that's the only time that it's a good idea to have a scale and to weigh yourself. And that's based on research among people who have lost weight and kept it off, that they do weigh themselves regularly just to sort of keep it top of mind and to keep themselves on track. But while you're in the weight loss process, I strongly discourage weighing at all. And I do encourage If you weigh, weigh once a month at the most. And if you can get a body composition test done, that's the way to go. Oh, can I throw in a quick question about that? So I have seen that there are a lot of body composition machines at gyms, for instance. Mm -hmm. So how would one get an interpretation if they do not know what the results mean? Oh, there are different types of body composition scales. 
Um, I like the in-body one. That's just the one that I'm used to dealing with. And I would just say, look at your body fat mass and look at your dry lean mass and use those numbers. Like you don't really need to know anything else about it. Just look at body fat, see what changes are there and look at dry lean mass and see what changes are there. And hopefully what's happening is you're losing fat and you're not losing any more than one pound of dry lean mass for every 10 pounds of fat. That is my rule of thumb. And the other body composition scales that are out there, you'll have to ask the staff how to interpret it because I'm not familiar with all of them. I don't know yeah. all of them. And yeah, I'm wondering to... if you could just go to the website, perhaps, you know, like ours is the in body and maybe you mm -hmm. can go to the website and it might explain yeah. mm -hmm. you know, what, what each what number, number means mean. and then, yeah. yeah. And how you can yeah. track it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, I think that the most important thing to remember here is that you want to really ditch all the scale craziness. We have in the past, or at least I have in the past, used the scale as a way to judge myself for my behavior. And we get so focused on that number. And it's just, it's not a friendly tool to have when you're trying to lose body fat and get healthy again. As long as you know that you're not eating a bunch of processed crap junk food, you're paying attention to your water intake, you're getting the sleep that you need, and you're making sure that you're not eating your way through your emotions, that you're allowing yourself to feel your emotions and you're not eating your way through them, then you're doing the right things in order to get yourself healthy again. There's just so much more about this journey that is so much more important than that freaking number on the scale. It just is. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to encourage everyone to just stay focused on what's important and don't use the scale as a way to judge yourself. And um, I also want to mention that the Journey Beyond Weight Loss course that I have online is going to be opening up again in May. That's just a few weeks from now, really. We're, um, we're towards the end of March now. And so keep your eyes on your email for that. If you want a quick course on how to lose weight, go to journeybeyondweightloss.com free course, and you can learn how to lose weight the right way. Uh, Marshall, do you have any last minute comments? I just have one thing that I'd like to say to you okay. know, before we end is uh -huh. one thing I'm going to start doing with patients before they get on the scale, especially patients that really dread getting on the scale is mm -hmm. I'm just going to have them take some deep breaths and mm -hmm. use a mantra that mm -hmm. says the scale will not change the way I feel about myself and just oh, keep repeating good. it until you believe it. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> nice. I love that. Yeah. So you can use that mantra at home, guys. You know, when you're, right. when you're or when you're getting on the in body at whatever facility you can find it at. So yeah. Awesome. Thank Definitely. you. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's all for this week. We will see you next week. In the meantime, um, have fun getting healthy again. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.